Okay. Uh, so um, here I am back again. I am going to be uh, conducting a small session about something called the data science virtual machine. <laughs> and uh, not all of the capabilities that I show you are available in Azure Gov, but uh, they are coming. And I was talking to Steve and others, uh, specifically the GPUs-based uh, VMs are coming in Azure Gov. So uh, the Esri team talked about, um, about their offering just a moment ago. And I want to sort of build up on that and talk about uh, something called the data science virtual machine. But before we do, before we do, I have just a couple of concept slides. And uh, if you could go to the next slide. Uh, uh, I also want to introduce to you my colleague, Harun. And uh, you know, the last time I presented, uh, I was trying to crack some developer jokes, but nobody laughed till I, till I actually said this was supposed to be a joke. And then, uh, and then I, then I went home and I, you know, I was telling my wife that nobody laughed. And she said, you should never be cracking jokes. Nobody other than yourself understands your jokes. So, so I said, no, 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 I'm going to, to by the way, that was a joke also. Um, <laughs> I, 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 that's why I brought Harun to do the heavy lifting part of this demo. Uh, so this, this is going to be a short, present, uh, short presentation. And then we will give you back some time to you know, network and talk. I, I know you enjoy that part quite a bit. So I, I wanted to start out, instead of just jumping into the data science VM, I wanted to talk about some a few terms here. Uh, many of you know deep learning. This is an area of, of great interest to me. Steve, uh, uh, if you were not here for the, uh, the meetup last time, he, uh, he and another gentleman did some great demos about facial recognition and showing pictures and then being able to recognize and I, I have a slide here which I want to show you. There was a very interesting question from the audience last time. That what, if I sh what if you showed a picture of a BMW 2018 which you don't have in your database? How will that work? And, and of course the answer is that you know, these deep learning algorithms are not actually doing just pattern matching. They're doing all kinds of feature detection. So they will detect that it is indeed a BMW car. It, and, and it will be able to tell you more about it even without seeing that. So deep learning. Uh, multiple stages of learning, and this is really where a lot of innovation is happening. Uh, whether it is vision API, speech API, you name it, right? Uh, every, you know, go to any, any VC um, event and you will see some sort of deep learning embedded in it. And, you know, along with deep learning, we were finding out the, the amount of compute capacity needed to run some of these high-end algorithms is best done by GPUs. So there is something called the N-Series machines, which we'll show you in a moment. That has been available in Azure, coming to Azure Gov soon. Uh, so we'll be using that. So significant acceleration for training of your data. And then uh, why are we talking about this in terms of cloud? What we are finding is a gravity of a, a lot of these data sets are moving to the cloud and available on the cloud itself. So to be able to run these, uh, in the cloud makes, makes a big difference. And then we have tools, all kinds of tools, uh, not just, we're not talking about just Microsoft tools, of course. We're talking about, you know, the tools that open source tools that the community is using, whether it is R, Python, Scala, all of those tools. And then, of course, R uh, has a special place in everybody's heart, R and Python. So with that, uh, can we go to the next slide, please? I just, just wanted to, you know, just to you know, remove the, the, uh, the boredom of slides, I wanted to put this picture together. If you've been following the machine learning space, there was a competition conducted where they took 1.3 million high-resolution pictures, which included 1,000 different distinct types. Okay? And then they had a competition about which neural network-based algorithm could be good at detecting these pictures. And you know the the the, the team that won uh, had some interesting answers. So I just wanted to show you. So after training the algorithm by, can I have the folks in the back uh, because you know our, our audio will pick it up. So if if you don't mind moving to that side, please. So the winning entry uh, was you know so they trained the algorithm with these 1.3 million images, and then then they produced these images and asked the algorithm to detect. And just to make it fair for the algorithm, they said, okay, you're allowed to tell us your top three choices. 
based on the confidence that you have in detecting. And look at these pictures for a moment. It's quite fascinating to look at this. Uh, so if you look at the top four choices, in this scale, I couldn't tell you if it was a quail or an otter, frankly, but it was able to, it got the first choice in its second attempt. Look at this, for example. You know, the, the algorithm said it was snowplow, and it got it in, in the first attempt. And look at the other interesting choices, by the way. The algorithm thought that it was a drilling platform, or a lifeboat, maybe, or even a garbage truck, right? But so all of these choices make sense to a certain extent, but it got it at the highest probability. Look at this, for example. It's a scabbard. It did not get it right, but it thought it was an earthworm or, or a broom. But it, so you can imagine that you know, these things are getting better and better over time. So if you wanted to do deep learning, if you go to the next tab, if you wanted to do deep learning, you clearly need these high-powered algorithms. You need GPU. You need high compute. And then you need all of the other things to wrangle the data. I heard somebody say when the Power BI presentation was going on that I would run a regression for doing this kind of analysis. Of course, you, you want to take this data. You want to apply stream analytics, maybe combine this data at a streaming in. You want to take data factory to move that data around. So you have to do a bunch of things. Deep learning is a small component of that entire stack. And if you go to the next slide, uh, this really talks about the features that are available today with, you know, for example, our server, the feature engineering, the visualization that you saw with Power BI, the data pipelines, and, and data lake is like the Uber store where you store, where you bring in your structured and unstructured data and do analysis on it. So uh, we have been, uh, through this meetup, the last time we covered a number of areas. We, you know, we talked about uh, the cognitive API, we covered Power BI, and we'll continue to talk about these tools in future meetups as well. Uh, if you go to the next slide, Harun, please, and, and just keep, I'll skip through this one. Uh, and, and one more, just to give you the most of time here, I just wanted to introduce this and then switch over to Harun for a quick demonstration. So there is a service in Azure called the Azure ML, and uh, if you have not used it, it's quite interesting. You basically, it's a drag and drop. You, all the algorithms that I talked about, uh, whether they are uh, you know, regression algorithms, neural net, uh, you name it, those algorithms are available. So Microsoft has made a number of high quality algorithms available. If you uh, want additional algorithms, you can go out to the open source community, bring it in. What I like about the Azure Machine Learning Studio is you can drag and drop these algorithms and then train it. And then the hard part of training an algorithm and then operationalizing it, how does somebody use that? And the idea is that once you have trained the algorithm, you have tested it, you can right click and publish it as a, as a web service and then start using it. So Azure ML is a service which, again, is not yet available in Azure Gov, but you know, um, recently there was an announcement that the big data HD Insight platform is available in Azure Gov. So these things are coming. Since you can't use Azure ML right now, we wanted to talk about this concept of a data science virtual machine, which what Microsoft has done is created essentially a virtual machine with all of these tools that are installed. So uh, they, they have things like the R server, the, the Python, uh, you know, Power BI, all the things that we have talked about, the Power BI desktop that we talked about. On top of that, they've installed these deep learning toolkits. So this is Microsoft's cognitive toolkit. Then you have some open source one and other toolkits that come. So you can go to the marketplace and go get yourself a data science VM. And then these tools are available. So even though Azure ML is not available in, in, in Azure Gov, you can still continue to run these machine learning algorithms. And recently, uh, we were involved in a project, and, and Harun did the bulk of work, and I invited him to show you this, is you can essentially take this base image, and then, you, and then the, what the team has done is allowed other partners to bring in their products on top of that. So the Esri team was here. Too bad they were not here to listen. They got some free publicity out of this demonstration, uh, out of this, this part. What we were asked to do was you know, take the base ARM template, and I'm throwing in a new term. ARM template is the way to provision resources in Azure. So they essentially gave us the base ARM template and 
through this concept of VM extension, which is an extensibility mechanism, they asked us to add the Esri software on top of this base software here. Okay? And we were asked to do that, and we just completed that project. You should be able to see those ARM templates after the testing is complete. So with that, Harun, would you mind just showing us A, the ARM template, and then um, since it takes a few minutes to provision a machine, an NCDs machine, uh, Harun was kind enough to provision one for us, so he's going to RDP into that machine and just browse through some of the tools that are available. Great, I think that mic is working. All right, how's everyone doing? Um, again, my name's <laughs> Harun. Uh, this is my first time at this meetup, um, so good to see you all. Um, so as Vishwas said, uh, uh, part of my task um, with this project was to create a um, a virtual machine extension, which I'm not sure how many familiar how familiar you guys are with Azure Resource Manager templates. But um, as Vishwas said, it's basically a way to uh, provision um, these networking infrastructure resources uh, with a JSON template and. Um, I'm sure a bunch of you are familiar with uh, JSON. And, uh, um, if you can't see this, something's wrong with your eyes. Uh, you know, because you know, uh, this has been zoomed up to the max capacity. No, sorry, sorry, sorry. No, this is fine. Yeah. I, my eyes are really bad. Yeah. Yeah. So I appreciate this. Um, but yeah, so basically, I'm not going to go through the specifics of this um, ARM template. But um, basically, a resource manager template has uh, a section of the JSON file uh, designated for parameters that you can extend out to whoever's deploying the template. Um, and some of the temp uh, parameters are like the administrator username, password, um, the name of the virtual machine you're going to be provisioning, the size of the virtual machine, um, along with some other things. But basically, what this template does is it provisions, as Vishwas said, it provisions a uh, data science virtual machine. Um, and then on top of that, it runs a PowerShell script after the completion of the deployment of the virtual machine. So you can see here, there's a, ne there's a section of this template that's designa designated specifically to resources. And you can see here, there's a storage account that is deployed, um, a public IP address that we can use to RDP into the virtual machine, um, a virtual network, uh, network security group, a, a network interface, and um, finally, this virtual machine. So you can see that the virtual machine is um, provisioning a virtual machine based off of this data science image. And then uh, if you haven't worked with um, virtual machine <laughs> extensions, there is, um, so with, with this uh, level of, uh, on the JSON template, um, this is the virtual machine. And on, an, on another sub-level of this uh, virtual machine, you can deploy a extension. So you can do either deploy it as a separate resource or you can de deploy it as a sub-resource of the, um, the virtual machine. And as you can see here, uh, there is a um, settings uh, property for uh, this section of the template. And um, what it does is basically you can grab um, a list of files or scripts and then have a command to execute those scripts here. Um, and I'm not going to get into the details of the, there's, there's a bit of details around how to create this ARM template, especially with uh, specific options. Like if you wanted to install the deep learning toolkit in addition to the ArcGIS software or just the ArcGIS software alone, um, there's, a, there's a series of nested um, configurations that you can apply. and. Uh, there are resources available online of how you do that, but that uh, provides kind of some flexibility uh, to your template. Um, so if you... So Harun, this, t this template that you're showing us is going to be available uh, once it goes through? Correct. So, so, so folks here, if they wanted to install a custom tool of their choice that works in their domain, Great. they'll be able to download this and update it and just run it in their subscription. Correct. That, Correct. That's, that's the right. idea. Right, and yeah. the idea of this whole project was, as Vishwas was saying earlier, if you had some proprietary software that you wanted to integrate with um, some of the tools of the data science virtual machine, that you can create a custom script to basically install that on top of the, the this data science virtual machine image. Um, so, and I'm not going to really go into um, uh, too much detail on again the template, but uh, so again, this is hosted on. So this is like the GitHub repo that we hosted the template on, and um, 
there's this, this deployed Azure button, which basically deploys the template. You can either do that through PowerShell, I'm sure you guys are familiar with that, or um, this is just an easy mechanism that I use to and, 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 you know, just a little trick, right? I mean, you, you, even though this, this data science VM that he's deploying, uh, this, this template is designed for, for Azure, you can, you can uh, you know, take this ARM template and then make some changes and then, you know, deploy it to your subscription. And, and this is one capability that, 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 that people uh, um, have been gravitating towards, especially if they're dealing with data sets that they don't want to share. Azure ML is a hosted service this VM is hosted in your VNet. So you control the VM, you control the disks, you control everything associated with this. Yeah, um, so this is just a basic uh, form that you can fill out uh, with, uh, that'll designate certain settings for the virtual machine. Um, so right now, I think Vishwas touched upon this, this uh, v virtual machine size isn't available for Gov, but uh, this is necessary to actually install the deep learning toolkit extension. But if you didn't want to install the deep learning toolkit extension, you could choose, uh, variety of different sizes. Um, so, you know, you fill out this form, click purchase, it would provision a virtual machine for you, and uh, then you, sh you would be able to uh, RDP into that. Um, so this is the resource group that was provisioned as a result, and you can see all the resources that were in that template are provisioned here. Um, and so you can, you know, use this IP address to RDP into uh, the virtual machine, and and yeah, so as you can see, this is the resulting um, uh, machine uh, from the deployment, um, and there are a variety of different softwares that Vishwas uh, touched upon, like, uh, so we have, you know, RStudio here, um, ArcGIS Pro, and this is just a sample project that I pulled up. I think this is uh, Wellington in New Zealand, um, just a 3D map of uh, some of the buildings and uh, uh, construction in that city. But uh, yeah, so uh, another thing you can do with this also is, uh, you know, obviously create a, um, a file share on the storage account that was provisioned as a, uh, along with this machine. Um, so you could share data sets uh, amongst uh, different users or collaborators. But, um, so yeah, the idea is, is e even if you had, maybe you weren't even using ArcGIS Pro and you wanted to install some other um, data science software, um, but you wanted to use the uh, tools that the data science virtual machine offered, um, this would be a good way to do that, kind of create a virtual machine extension on top of the data science virtual machine. Yeah, and uh, any other specific questions, I'll be happy to answer as well. Thank you, thank you. So if you could go back to the slides, we, we, will, we have just a couple more slides. We'll, we'll pause here for, for questions. So this was a quick demonstration. Steve, do you want to come up and talk about the Hackfest, please? Since you're <coughs> So we just want to uh, make a quick announcement about the Azure Government uh, Hackfest and training. This is an event that is going to happen in about six weeks, June 7th and 8th. It's a free event, and uh, basically the format is going to be for developers and IT pros. So if you're a technical, or, or uh, let's say a non-technical decision maker, sorry, uh, this may not be the event for you, but send your developers, send your IT pros. Uh, the first day is going to be basically free training, uh, the almost conference style uh, talks, presentations that will be delivered. And then by the end of the first day and then the entire second day, it's completely hands-on. Um, it's a Hackfest style, Hackathon style uh, event where you'll have a lot of hands-on opportunity. Members from the Azure Government Engineering team, such as myself, uh, will be there the entire two days uh, delivering the presentations on the first day and just generally being available for questions on the second day. Uh, we'll give each team a series of challenges uh, that they can go off and you know, use Azure government technologies uh, to build hopefully compelling solutions and then we'll have final presentations at the end of the, the second day. Um, the event is filling up very quickly. We're six weeks away and we are getting close to being sold out. Um, so if you are interested in this or you have developers or IT pros that are interested, uh, please register as soon as possible because I'm worried that we're going to be turning people away in, in a couple weeks. Um, 
and, and based on the turnout, we'll probably repeat the event uh, in, in a few months. But I really think this is a great opportunity. So if, you, if you're a developer, you have developers, IT pros that are interested in free training, uh, you know, definitely go to the Eventbrite site and register. We've posted on the blog. Um, and this is going to be, we say Washington, D.C. It's actually at the Microsoft office in Chevy Chase. Uh, that's where the, the event will be those two days. If anyone has any questions about it, uh, you know, you can find me walking around after. And that probably has the link to the Eventbrite page and everything. Is there a quick question over here? Yeah, are you going to be recording the sessions? We're not recording the sessions at the event. Um, so if you're unable to attend, maybe you can get the next one. I, I will also say that the uh, Microsoft Tech Summit that we just had recently in Washington, D.C., uh, we have recorded those sessions and very similar content. In fact, maybe the next slide. Thank you for the segue. Okay. Um, the, uh, this link right here, aka.ms Azure Gov video, is the Azure Government Video Library. In fact, all of the sessions that we did do at Tech Summit have now been posted, including a, a session that Vishwas gave. Um, so I definitely recommend anyone, everyone checking that out. Videos on Channel 9. We have our Azure Government blog, uh, our documentation, of course, uh, our, our meetup. And then down here, this very last link I want to point out uh, is uh, AKAMS. It's Azure Government. Azure Gov Meetup channel. It's actually a YouTube channel, so you could get to it with a YouTube URL too, um, and that's where we're posting videos of these sessions here tonight. Uh, but this one here, Azure Gov Video, that is the one that we have a lot of uh, video content posted, uh, much of which is similar content we'll be talking about at the Hackfest. Um, so I, I definitely recommend checking that out. All right, thanks a lot. Thank you, Steve. I think that. Karina, you have any last words? I think this is we are done. Thank, thank you, everybody, for coming. Come to the next meetup, of course, Tina. Thank you. Yeah. And and uh, Harun and I, uh, can I volunteer for the next half an hour to answer questions? Uh, no, I'll be here as well. <laughs> uh, so, so thank you. You've been a great audience, and we'll, we'll love to to connect with you back uh, or or uh, you know reach us on Twitter or email. Thank you for coming. Have a great evening. <laughs>